Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Joseph. I'm pretty excited about this video because this is going to be me editing and adding more purpose to this image that I captured. You haven't seen the behind the scenes because this image is one of the resulting images from a ton of images that I captured whilst I was filming my beauty workshop. And that is going to be launched, I think, at the end of this month, February. So if you're excited about that, you can stay tuned. When I launch it, I'm going to create another video on YouTube telling you guys all about it. But basically, in that course, I'm just going over my favorite lighting scenarios and I also go over setting lens choices and just a few more details in that workshop that would help you create stunning and beautiful images like this with a better understanding so you'd know when to choose certain lenses you'd know when to choose certain modifiers and you'd also understand properly where to position your lights and what they actually do to your images so for example this image was captured with two lights and it's still a beautiful image that can be used for a marketing campaign. So over here inside Photoshop, I've already gone ahead to create like this little poster for Flow that is actually now into <laughs> skincare. And then we're saying this is the melanin for the African carefully created for your rich dark skin, right? So this is something that you can use to market a product, something that you're releasing. I mean, not you specifically, but like if you're shooting um, images like this that your clients are going to be using to create marketing collaterals, you know, to launch products to you know, create awareness, whatever the case may be, I want you to know that these techniques that I'm going to be showing you are things that you can actually apply to your life and capture more purposeful images, right? But this image right here, let me just zoom in so you guys can see, it's not the finished product. This is still the raw file that I imported into Photoshop and then created this layout on. So if I hide this layout folder, you can see that all the text, all the copy is gone. And when I make it visible, now it's showing. I also want you to understand like what it takes to, you know, create like a high-end image in terms of post-processing so that you can get the best looking results for your clients, right? In this case, the client is Flowshop. So I'm starting off in Capture One and I really want you guys to understand the way Capture One works and what I was, you know, typically do in a case like this, right? This workflow is actually going to be very simple because we're going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting inside Photoshop. And what I mean by that is because I was more intentional about the way I was capturing the images, there really isn't a lot of things that I have to do to this raw file to bring out all the richness and depth that I needed. I made sure that I shaped the light and captured exactly the way I wanted the images to look like, right? But then again, your camera can only do so much. And so when we have these raw processing softwares, they're just here to help us, you know, just fine tune the image and prepare it for the final touches that we're going to be adding inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to start off and inspect my histogram and you guys can see clearly that the image is very well balanced it's not overexposed or it's not underexposed and i wanted to have that glossy dewy look in the images that is why you can see that we have all those you know highlights just adding more glow and depth to the image i absolutely love it and it's perfect for what we're doing today but the main change is when you import raw files into capture one it adds its own profiles and it adds its own adjustments and those are things that you may like or you may dislike for me for example i always always almost automatically change my icc profile from generic to pro standard but in this case pro standard doesn't look too good it looks too green and it's also moving the skin tone and the background to a closer hue but i want to add more separation in there even though the color scheme that we're going with you can see is within like skin tone you know like orange brown like all those colors and we can also fine tune her skin tone later on using my melanin actions we'll get there but for now i just want you to understand like what i'm doing the choices i'm making and stuff like that you can see that it looks very reddish inside generic but it's something i can control so i will leave it as generic i'm going to close the basic tab and i also know that capture one adds a lot of sharpening to your raw file so i'm just going to take that out because i don't need a sharpening it's something that i can add in post if i need it where i'm going to play the most is going to be inside exposure high dynamic range and white balance so let's just start off with white balance i really wanted a very warm image when i was capturing this because you know typically i'll keep my kelvin at let's say 5000 but i think when i was capturing it at that time it was looking a little bit too cool for my liking this is really muted it's not really 
you know glowy and warm and i wanted that warm rich tone in the image and so i you know just shut up my kelvin and then it just warmed it up i think over here too is just looking a little bit too warm it's making it look flat so we need to find a balance if i go to a shot this is where the white balance is and i think i'm just going to take it down a notch actually i'm just flatten it out and keep it at 6000 then i'm going to go into the kelvin and maybe just actually just change that a little bit i think somewhere here looks good now we're going to go into exposure and what i want to do here is bring the brightness down ever so slightly so like maybe minus two and i want to add a bit more contrast and also just bring the exposure down a tiny bit i'm going to close that close the white balance and go into high dynamic range and over here i'm just going to bring the highlights down as you can see when i'm doing that we are retaining some detail in the product that she's holding and i absolutely love it i'm just going to open up the shadows just a little bit bring the whites down and then just make the blacks just a little bit darker so if i just turn on my before and after you'd see this is the after this is the before it looks a little bit washed out but now we're beginning to add a bit of definition to it and i, I think i like it moving on we need to open this image inside of photoshop but before i do that i just want to see if i can you know adjust some of the colors inside capture one still so i'm going to go inside color editor and i'm going to go into the basic tab and then just try and make some changes inside the reds and the oranges so i'm going to start off with the reds just going to desaturate the reds if i move it all the way to the left you can see that it's taking out some of the redness especially in the lower part of the frame but the upper part is still staying the same it means that those are going to be found inside orange so if i go into orange for example and start pulling it down i can see that we've essentially turned the whole image into a black and white image all right so i'll go into the reds and i'll just bring that up a little bit because i don't want to desaturate it so much i'll go into orange and just desaturate that just a little bit and i'm also going to change that color a little bit more towards red so that we are skewing the colors at the top part of the frame to match with what's at the bottom so here's a before here's an after before after you can see that we are beginning to add a bit of realism to the image and i think it looks really good i think i'll go back into the red and rather up my saturation and move that towards a warm tone somewhere like this and that's absolutely fine this is all that we're going to be doing inside capture one so what i'll do it now is just right click come down to edit with and go inside photoshop i'm just going to press on edit variants and it's going to open a copy of this inside photoshop so this is what we have now inside photoshop and this is what we're going to be using um, to you know create our final high-end edit all right starting off i feel like we need to have a plan so we need to know exactly what we're doing and when i zoom into the image luckily she has good skin the makeup also just covered everything really nicely but there's still a few spots that are standing out to me so those are the little things i want to get rid of and inside her hair i think uh, they added a bit of gel to her hair and we can see some of them reflecting some of the light i want to dim that down because i feel it's just taking attention away from what we are truly selling then with her lips i think i'm just going to warm that up because probably when we're working inside capture one we tone that down a little bit i just want to add a bit of that fresh lip look to the image and so i'm going to redden her lips a little bit then we're going to try and match her face to the rest of the body that i feel is something that my skin tone lads can easily do so maybe i'm not too worried about it we'll get rid of some of the smile lines and that should basically be it so let's just start off by first of all creating a blank layer and i'm going to call this blemish because this is where we're going to be removing a lot of the blemishes in the image so blemishes i'm going to start off with my healing brush and the way the healing brush works is really simple and that's why i absolutely love it so i want to get rid of this reflection or this gel right and what i'll do is i'll just press alt on my keyboard sample a good area and just paint over that and you can see when i release the mouse it's gone but with the healing brush tool you need to make sure that you're set to current and below so that you know i created a blank layer it's going to sample from that blank layer and also the background layer and apply the adjustment onto the blank layer that i created called blemishes right let me just do another one for you to see i'm going to zoom in and j is the shortcut for the healing brush so i'll just sample an area like this 
paint over and then you can see that it's gone so this is what i'm going to be doing inside of the hair and then we'll come back and then treat the skin so i'm just going to forward this part because this is the same thing i'm going to be doing and i don't want it to bore you guys All right, so I'm sure you guys were not probably seeing what I was talking about, but right now I'm done removing all of those little gel reflections in the hair. And when I do it before and after, and I can see that the hair is looking cleaner, it's less distracting, and now you can focus on that subject fully. I'm now going to come down onto her skin and I'm going to start removing some of these uh, blemishes on her face. Thankfully, she doesn't have too many, so it shouldn't take us too much time. Okay, so one thing I want to say is I'm done with like removing all of the blemishes that were standing out to me in the beginning and already you can tell that the image is looking very good but with removing blemishes guys you have to be very patient it takes a lot of time you can see as a before here's an after and already the image is looking really good here's a before after just removing blemishes alone can take your work all the way to looking like really really good so now what i want to do is whilst i was zooming in and editing the skin i noticed that like there are certain parts of the skin that are like really reflecting a lot of light and we can use frequency separation to you know like reduce the texture that is present in the image because we want it to look appealing we want to retain the texture but we still just want to have a bit more control over it so i'm going to run two sets of frequency separation the first one is just going to have to deal with the texture and then we'll flatten the image and then we'll run another one where we're going to smoothing out the skin all right okay so i'm going to go into my actions and then we're going to do that but before i do that i want to remove some of this peach fuzz around the nose and just make it a little bit cleaner but for this i'm going to use a clone stamp tool and because this is different from all the healing i've done so far i just want to create a new layer for that when i'm done and i love the way it looks i'll just merge it down onto the blemishes so i'm going to press s for the clone stamp tool and with this i just need to soften my brush reduce my flow to let's say nine percent and then i'll just start sampling and then painting over also make sure that you are set to current and below so that when you're sampling and painting it will sample from the layer underneath and then paint you can use it like the brush to paint over onto the new layer that you created right so this is all i'm doing maybe increase my brush a little bit let's say 22 percent so the effect is a little bit stronger and now all I'm doing is just painting inside and then just trying to reduce the peach fuzz. I'm not too worried about it, it's something I can fix using uh, frequency separation but I just wanted to tone this down a little bit so just go and do like, a, I'm just going to reduce the opacity just a little bit, somewhere like so. And I'm just going to merge it down onto the blemishes. So yes, before and after everything we've done so far is over there. All right, now we're going to run our frequency separation. Still the same 16 bits and I'm using my actions. So if you don't have that, I think you should just go onto my uh, website and copy that because it really speeds up your workflow, makes you work faster and also helps you create consistent results every single time. What I want to do is I want to use a very low radius so that I can push a lot of the texture onto the low layer what frequency separation does is it separates the textures from the tones so that you can deal with them independently but because i said we're doing this in two parts we're trying to smoothing out the texture on the skin it means that ideally instead of pushing all of the texture onto the texture layer i want to have a little bit of that still on the blur layer if that makes sense so i'm just going to move on to the area that i feel had a lot of texture and just reduce that a little bit i think somewhere like this should be okay 
and then I'll just press OK. So we'll leave Photoshop to do the rest of the actions and now I'm going to open that. I don't need the FS helper right now. I'll just let that go. If I hide the texture layer, you can see that we still have some texture retained on the skin. When I make it visible, now you can see that the rest of the textures are showing through. But this is what we want. We just want to smoothing out some of these textures on the skin. So on the blur copy, I'm just going to hit B for my brush to press and hold and make sure I am on the mixer brush, right? And now what I'm going to do is just paint ever so slightly over these textures and you can see that they're beginning to disappear and this is all that I want to do to even out like those textures. So right now when I turn on the texture layer you can see that we don't really have like so much of that texture showing through it's being toned down just a little bit. If I do it before and after you can see that we have reduced like the textures over there and now it's beginning to look a little bit more controlled. So I'll do the same thing over here as well just try and blend all those textures with themselves and just get it to look smoother. Once I'm here, I might as well just paint over some of these areas and then just try and have as much control as I can over the textures that are standing out and jumping out at me. It doesn't have to be perfect because there are other things that we will still do to the image to enhance it but for now we just again just want to have a bit more control over the way the textures are showing through so i'm just going to speed through this but generally i'm just painting over the textures and then just trying to you know tone them down a little bit Alright, so now I've been able to, you know, paint the majority of like those textures that were standing out at me. I think I like the way we've been able to control it. So what I'll do now is just merge it down. I'm just painting over the top here one last time. And now I'm just going to merge it down, right? So with the blemishes, command E. And I'll just call this blemishes again. So here's a before and after. Now you can see that the image is beginning to look really good. I really love what we've done so far. So now we're going to run our frequency separation action. So the same 16 bits, press play. And now we're gonna choose like a high, the regular radius that we've been choosing all the time. And this time I'm just gonna press, okay. I just want to make sure that we are properly separating the textures from the skin. I'll press OK. I'm going to turn on the help up because I want to know that I am smoothing out, you know, like those tonal transitions that aren't very smooth. Again, go back to the mixer brush and start evening out those differences. In case you can't see what's happening, if I just do it before and after, you can see that we are blending like that very dark tone into the rest of the image and it's making it look smooth. Right, so now I'm done with the frequency separation and I've been saying this all the time in my videos that when I'm doing frequency separation, my aim is not really to get like a very smooth image just using that. I just use that as a helper for dodge and bend. So even though I have pushed like the tones and you know just blended them to this level i still won't want to keep it here i am going to tone it down by reducing my opacity so i'm just going to bring the opacity down let's say to about 55 percent do it before and after so it is there but it's not as strong now we're going to do dodge and bend and then this is where majority of the change is going to happen so i'm going to show you how dodge and bend works and then we're just going to speed through the video again because i don't want it to be very very long so I'll go into my actions and I'm going to turn on dodge and bend complete and I'm just going to play that and it's going to create all the layers that I need for dodging and burning. All right. So I'm going to open that and go on to dodge. You can see that there are layer masks added to each of them. So the dodge layer has a mask, the burn layer has a mask and they are all set to black. 
now what i'm going to do is just select my regular brush this time i'm not using the mixer brush and i'll just drop my flow all the way to one percent and i'll zoom into an area where i see some inconsistencies and the way i work with dodge and burn is i don't necessarily separate the micro from the macro i try and do all of them at the same time so i can create as many dodge and burn layers as i need depending on what i'm doing so if i exhaust all the dodging or the burning on a particular group i can easily just create another group or then just simply run the individual actions so at this zoom level there are certain things that are standing out to me that i think i want to dodge so i'm just gonna hit b for my brush to swap it and make sure i'm painting with white make sure my flow is at one percent and now i'm just going to paint out with a very soft brush all the things that are standing out to me at this level so this is what i'm going to start off by doing in case you're not seeing what's happening here's a before and after i can see that we are beginning to you know add more depth by smoothening and making the transitions flow through into each other a little bit seamlessly all right so at this point i think i've done enough of the dodging and it's beginning to look a little bit more open everything is looking smoother and i think i like it so i'm going to move on to burn and i'm just going to start darkening all the other things that also you know are too bright for me and are not adding to the shape of the image for example the corner of the hair over here is looking too bright if i just do it before and after you can see that now we're adding shape to her hair a little bit more Okay, so this was just a little bit of a burn. So when I do it before and after of the two of them, you can see that we have been able to, you know, polish up the image looking really good. Textures are on point. The tonal transitions are looking really good. But I want to inspect the image just a little bit more and be sure that I've covered, you know, at least a lot of the bases so that I don't have anything standing out immediately to me. So for example, if I look at this, I feel like it's not supposed to be present. So what I'll do is I'll just create a new blank layer. I could actually just go down onto frequency separation and do that. But I just want to create this on a separate layer because I'm going to do another level of dodging and burning, right? So what I'll do is I'm just going to use my healing brush and I just want to sample and just paint over this area like so. And then I'll just zoom out and check and see if I it's something that I really do want to get rid of or if I want to maintain. So maybe I'll just have it like as a balance, like a 50% balance between the two so that it's there, but it's not going to be as prominent as it is now. So I'm just sampling over good areas and then painting over that. And just like that, you can see that we've been able to tone it down. I'm even beginning to think that I should get rid of the highlight on this cheek. I'm not too sure about that. So I would rather go into frequency separation and work on the blank layer. So what I'll do is just use my regular brush and increase my flow to let's say about 14%. And I'll just start sampling and just, just filling in this area right here just to tone down the highlights a little bit. Now, after doing that and doing a before and after, I think I'm beginning to like it not being very prominent. But the problem here is that we have these textures here as well. So I think it should be also like an in-between. So I'm just going to go down on that blank layer, let's say to about 61% so that it just tones it down, but it's not going to be as obvious as before. So looking at all these, I think I like what we've done so far. I'm just going to go back onto that layer and, you know, just continue with my healing brush. Just sample and paint over these areas and just try and smoothing them together just like so so it's always a combination of these little things you know sometimes when you take some steps like frequency separation or dodge and burn other things become more prominent to you and then you can tackle them i'm also just going to do the same thing down here just sample 
and then just paint over and then just reduce the highlight over there all right this is looking really good so now what i'm going to do is run individual dodge and burn actions and i'm going to create my dodge and burn invert check layer on top of that now what i'm going to do is just adjust the curve so i can see a lot of the transitions and then i can focus on that and then just make sure like i'm painting and evening out you know the transitions so I'm going to go into dodge and I'm just going to paint over the areas that need dodging as well. So again, with a very low flow, let's say 1%, I'll just start painting these in like that. And then I'll just be filling it in. I know you can't see exactly what this is doing, but if I do it before and after, you can see that under her left eye, is beginning to blend in with the rest of the image and if i hide the check layer and then just do it before and after you can see that it is being lifted and it's looking a lot better so that's all we're going to be doing inside the check layer i think i'll do a separate video just going more in depth into using the check layer to help you you know finalize your dodging and burning All right, so it looks like we did a pretty good job using dodging and burning frequency separation all of that you know just to even out the skin tones i really like everything that we've done so far we just need to color the image maybe just play with the eye whites a little bit i'll create a new blank layer and just get rid of the help layer create a new blank layer and i'll just paint with white very low flow again into the eyes just to even that out this is a shortcut <laughs> you don't always have to do this but it's just because I know I want to keep a little bit of that natural look in the eye I don't want to go overboard and so if I'm just using a white brush to paint in this case it's not going to be you know too too bad if I wanted to get rid of like every texture every vein in the eye then I would have gone more in depth but in this case I'm just painting with a white brush you know because I want to keep a little bit of that natural look in the eyes. So that's a before, after. I'm just going to reduce the opacity to about, let's say 60%, and that should pretty much be okay. All right, so the next thing we need to do is color grade. So I'm just going to go into my color grade action press play and it's going to create all the layers that i typically use for color grading we'll start off with our famous <laughs> melanin skin tone lats and i'm just going to cycle through them and see what's going to work for this image in particular so that's fade punch that's fairly muted Ooh, ooh, okay this is fire gold maybe i will be drawn towards i think it's a little bit too strong this is flamey Flozilla is going to be very strong. Ooh, oh, okay. <laughs> These are looking really good, honestly. And then there's Fury. Okay, so I know I don't like Fury for this. I am torn between Flozilla. Flozilla, I feel, is still keeping a bit of yellow tone in the face. Fairly muted, even though it was very strong. I think just gave me... Like a skin tone that i like even though it's shifted it towards like a red tint that's not looking too bad but my initial goal was to keep try and keep it a little bit warm so maybe uh i can't decide guys <laughs> okay let me reduce the opacity to about 50 percent and then go back to fairly muted yeah, I think Fairly Muted actually maintains a bit of the original tone. And so I might just stick with Fairly Muted. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so now we're going to go into Color Balance. And now we can play with the mid-tones and see what we can do. So I'm just going to add a bit of red. And I'll also just add just a tiny bit of magenta. Then we'll add a bit of blue. Let's just play with the mid-tones in this. And then I'll go into Hue Saturation 
I'll go into reds, pull down the saturation. Also darken it a little bit. And maybe just shift that color a little bit towards red, just like minus two. I'll go into yellows and just pull it down ever so slightly. I'll darken that as well. And I'll just move the yellows also towards red. Now I'm going to go into selective color. And I'll start off with yellow. So I'm just going to play with the sliders and see what it gives me. Yeah, I think I'm going to go towards the left, go into magenta. I think I'll just add a like plus one, go into yellows. I think I'll add a bit of yellow to this. Now I'll go into reds. I think I want to darken the red actually. So adding cyan is just going to darken the reds a bit. I'll go into magenta and I feel I want to add just a little bit of magenta. I'll go into yellow, just like that. Then we can go into neutrals and let's just play with the colors here as well. I don't think I'll touch magenta. Nah, I don't think I'll touch yellow as well. So just the cyan. Actually, let me just darken this a little bit. Okay, so if I turn off and on my color grade, this is before, this is after. You can see that it's looking really good. The skin tones are looking very rich. I really, really love what we've done so far, but there's still just a little bit of some color inconsistencies and I want to fix that, right? So I'll create a new layer. I'll change the blending mode down to color. I'll press B for my brush tool. And now I'm going to sample a color that I like. And I just paint over the areas that aren't, you know, absorbing the colors that we apply to the image. So I'll just go over the entire image, sampling from different areas and then just painting over the areas that I feel need just a little bit more work to blend in with the rest of the surrounding colors. I think I'll use a flow of about 25%. So I'm sampling from different areas and then just painting it into the skin. I don't want the entire skin to have like one color because that's going to be flat. I think I like where we are. I'm going to go into my color grade group and I'll just bring the opacity down to about 60%. I don't want it to be too obvious that we've done this color grading to the image. Even though I like the colors, I always don't keep my effects at 100%. Let me just go up, say 70%. Before, after. I really like where the color is. It's absolutely amazing. So now what I'm going to do to finalize this image is just going to add a bit of film grain. Actually, let me make a noise. Press play and press OK. So when I zoom in, we should be able to see that we've added a bit of texture to the image. I think I like it. Now I just want to add a bit of color depth to her lips. So I'll go into hue saturation, use a picker tool, target this area and then just drag it to the right and it's just going to add a lot of saturation to that part. All right. So doing this is affecting the entire image. I just need to zone, like close the zone down a little bit so it's more focused in a specific area. But that's not going to be enough as well. So what I'll do is just zoom out a little. And I'm going to hide the layer by inverting the layer mask. And I'm going to hit B for my brush tool. And this time I'm just going to paint with white over the lip area. And that should just bring that color back. Awesome. I think I like what we've done. Again, it's very strong. So I'll just bring the opacity down to about 70%.
All right. So I feel like the face is just a little bit brighter than the rest of the body. So what I'll do now is just create a curves and I'll just darken the curves down ever so slightly. And I'm going to invert that. So hit command I go to my brush tool and with a high flow this time paint with white over the face and that should just darken it a little bit and that should make it match the rest of the body in terms of lighting so yes a before after now do you see that the face is matching the rest of the body that's amazing paint a bit into the ears do the same thing over here perfect again i don't want it to be too strong so i'll just bring the opacity down let's say to about 79 percent before after before after so i feel this actually just ends the high-end retouching that we've done so let me just put all of this into a group and then we'll call this retouch And here's before, here's after. Before, after, amazing. Now what I want to do is just create a stamp visible layer of what we've done. And I want to make a duplicate of this and put it into the artwork that I showed you guys earlier, right? But what I did is I worked on a smart object. So when I double click on that, it should open the original file that we were working on. And then I can replace it with, you know, the image that we just edited. Moving from that layer to this, you can see that we are losing a bit of specularity in the image, but we'll finalize that. Okay. So right now, let me just right click, create a duplicate and I'm sending it to layer zero and I'll press OK. That should bring it here. Now we want it to match the same size as the previous image. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity. It means I need to drag it up right there. You can see it clicked into place. So when I do it before and after or when I hide the layer, you can see that it's fallen exactly in the same place that the image was. I'll just hit command S to save and this should apply this new image that we've added um, onto the artwork that we created. All right, so moving to the artwork, we should see that it's been updated. So when I hide the reference, this becomes our final looking image. I really, really like what we've been able to do so far. So this is before, this is the raw file, this is after. And the colors are more muted, they're better looking, and the skin also looks very, very good. Here's a before here's after she still looks the same but she just looks a little bit more polished and i think this can pass for a very good looking um, artwork that you're using to market something so so that is it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed it i know it's a very long tutorial but we had to go through all these steps just to get to this point i wanted you to see it almost in real time exactly what i would do to an image like this to get it to look really really good i feel now that i should have probably just worked on her nails a little bit but i'll just do that later we're basically done it's simple just use a clone stamp tool you know sample the good nail area and then just paint over it till everything looks good and then you're good to go but i'm not going to do it at this point because <laughs> we're pretty much done with the video and i don't want to make it any longer so yeah let me know how you guys feel about this if you're excited about the workshop coming up let me know also check out my digital store i have a ton of digital products there already that i'm sure you can cop to help you work faster and better there are also free sample raw files that you guys can download and play with as well as my melanin skin tone lads my echo tone uh, presets and some other lightroom and adobe camera raw presets just check them out i'll catch you guys in the next video because this has been a very long one and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next one peace